World of Made and Unmade by Jane Mead. Jane Mead's poem, World of Made and Unmade, moves with elegance between elegy and harvest, between the work of practical care to the unmooring that loss precipitates. The poem allows for the intrusions of dogs in the laundry room flooding, acknowledging how the force of our days persists in the company of the dying, and how those disruptions are sometimes what can help carry us, sustain us through the experience, realign our spirit or afford us reprieve. And in the midst of this is the poet's mother, the life she has lived, persuasive and just as vital. Mead moves from the day's demands, engaged and articulate, to depict the service, the duty, and the company the dying require. Occasionally, the poem is still reflective, posited at the bottom edge of the page, engaging in the ongoing conversation and the reckoning. Her language serves loss as a bell serves its chime. In her life, Mead's mother planted and cared for 2001 pecan trees, her legacy an orchard. In world of made and unmade, her life asks her daughters, how will you spend your courage? This poem seems that brave response. It's an honor to be uh, reading Jane Mead's work for you this evening. The third time my mother fell, she stopped saying she wanted to die. Saying you want to die is one thing, she pointed out, but dying is quite another. And then she went to bed. Outside her window, the trees of her orchard are heavy with their load of ripening pecans. The shadow of the Oregon mountains creeps across the land, and the blue heron stands on the shore of the shrunken Rio Grande. Wichita, Chickasaw, Wichita, Shoshone, her every tree, her every row. I bring her coffee and a bun and a linen napkin, but Jesus haploid Christ, as her grandfather, the geneticist, used to say. I mean, how many linen napkins does one person need? How many linen napkins the size of small tablecloths does one person need? LVS, embroidered on each corner. And who was LVS anyway? Well, let's see. My mother begins, LVS, Lillian Vaughn Sampson, would have been your great-grandmother, the name going back to an orphan, a boy who took his sister's married name, becoming Sampson in the ship's log, and in this way we lost track of that side of the family. In the hills above Rincon, a woman is leaving jugs of fresh water outside the Rincon waterworks before locking the metal doors. Rincon, where the Rio Grande turns back on itself like the crook of an arm before heading south to become Rio Bravo del Norte. Rincon, a stop for water on the journey north. The United States of America does not extend refugee status to Mexicans. And when there was nothing left for her to do but die, I brought my mother home with me. I put her in the stone cabin by the vineyard, cabin of her ex, and now dead husband, my father, cabin he called the fortress. In those years, his mother came to live there, came to die. With the mediocre portraits of her three children hung at the foot of her bed, I tried to joke that she now was trapped into looking at our heads, and trapped thusly, she did what nobody could have predicted. She developed a sense of humor, an emergency sense of humor, the dark room in which we finally spoke. Mm -hmm. 